Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Glenroy Murray, and I'm here to talk to you about JFlight. But before I do, there's something I have to get off my chest. For some reason that I just can't quite put my finger on, they call me the Cape Queen in Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> I've been working at JFlag for the past three years, and JFlag is the leading human rights organization in Jamaica advocating for the rights, well-being, and livelihood of LGBT Jamaicans. I was their associate director of programs and advocacy, but while I'm here studying at SOAS, I'm doing a master's in law, I am an advisor to the organization. I'm here today to tell you about JFlag's work, how it's helping me and queer people like me in Jamaica be openly and visibly queer, and why they need your support to continue doing the great work that they are doing. Jamaica is unfortunately notoriously homophobic. You can see from the clippings here. Uh, it's a homophobia that has manifested itself in violence and discrimination. And despite 20 years of hard work by JFLAG, there are still significant legal challenges to the protection and promotion of the rights of LGBT Jamaicans. We know of the colonial burglary laws. They are still in effect. These are laws which criminalize anal sex generally, as well as same-sex intimacy between men specifically. There is little to no protection against discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. Trans persons cannot have their affirmed identities legally recognized. And same-sex couples are not considered under the rubric of family law protection. On top of these legal challenges, our studies and our surveys have shown that the homophobia and the violence and discrimination that characterizes it is widespread. Between January 2011 and January 2017, we received 261 reports of human rights violations. 115 of these reports were targeted attacks. Separately, 20 of these reports were cases of persons being violently displaced from their homes. Our 2015 survey shows us that LGBT persons are not likely to report these incidences to the police for multiple reasons, including the fact that they don't think that they'll take this situation seriously, or that, as in some cases, that they may get a homophobic response from the police. So that's the context in which we do our work. And we have taken multiple approaches to address the situation. We do policy and legal reform advocacy, where we engage our political leaders, our key decision makers, to get them to understand why our laws need to change and what they can do to make it so. We also do visibility campaigns like the We Are Jamaicans campaign, which sought to put a face and several faces to the local LGBT community. We also do public awareness and education. So for example, we trained over 1,000 public health care workers on how to provide stigma-free and non-discriminatory services to member of the members of the community. And we also do this, the gay agenda. It's our own manifesto that you can ask me more about in the question and answer section if you are so minded. <laughs> but my favorite activity that we did is pride. We do, we've been doing pride for going on five years now, and it is a celebration of Jamaican queerness. It's a week of activities where we showcase to the world, as well as to the wider Jamaican society, that one does not have to choose between being Jamaican and being queer, but that both can peacefully coexist. And we've seen the benefits of this kind of work. Uh, we did a survey in 2018. The results um, were shared in Jamaica in 2019. And we've seen a 5% increase in tolerant and positive attitudes since the last time we did the survey in 2015. Interestingly enough, we started Pride in 2015. So over four Prides, we've seen that 5% jump from 20% to 25%. We've also noticed that in Kingston, where we work, there's been a jump of tolerant and positive attitudes from 10% to 22%. And surprisingly enough, in West Milan, which is a rural area, that parish has the highest tolerance rates and that, have, that has moved from 20% to 31%. And we've also seen a small but still significant drop in 
negative attitudes from 60% to 57%. So why am I here today? It's not to boast about JFLAG's work. It's because that work hit a snag recently. On December 30, 2018, our offices burned down. And it significantly impacted our work. Rainbow House is where we conceptualize pride. It is where the first set of events were held. And it's also where our affiliate organizations did their community organizing work. We change works with LBT women. Transwave focuses on transgender health and well-being. And Equality Youth focuses on LGBT youth. And they were impacted as well. The total loss was just about 45,000 pounds. And we are working with multiple entities to get back that money. But in Jamaica, we believe every mickle makes a muckle, which basically means that every donation counts. With 2,500 pounds, we could get all our office supplies, and with 8,500 pounds, we could get um, all of our furniture. And all your contributions, each contribution, can make a difference. JFLAG's vision is that Jamaica can be a place for all Jamaicans to feel free. And it can be a place where one can claim that they're both Jamaican and queer and not feel a level of conflict. And each of you can support us in making that dream a reality. Thank you.